Thank you very much. That is insane. Hey everyone, welcome to The Cabin. My name's Alec Brits and today we're checking out The Bus Plus by SSL. Thanks as always to Studio Care for supplying the review units for these videos. If you enjoy what you watch here, please consider subscribing. But for now, strap in. This one might be a long one, but oh boy, it's gonna be worth it. On the front of the Bus Plus, we're gonna start off with our basic compressor controls. We have threshold, attack, makeup gain, sidechain high pass filter, ratio, release, and then we have our wet dry mix over here. Now, a lot of these buttons have secondary functions to them. So let's start with our makeup gain. By pressing it, you can put the makeup gain before or after the dynamic EQ section like this. If you hold down the makeup gain section, that activates the fine mode, which changes it from 2 dB steps down to 0.5 dB steps. This compressor uses MDAC technology in the makeup gain. This means you have very precise level matching between left and right. And because of the use of these, SSL is now also able to offer both feed forward and feed back compression styles. Our secondary function on the sidechain high pass allows us to be able to put the external sidechain in for the compressor, the DEQ, or for both. The mix control on this device is really quite interesting because most compressors have a wet and dry and you move between the wet and dry. However, for me, I work on a console and I'm used to having the dry signal staying one volume and then pushing in the parallel. Now, when you turn on the compressor and hold down the mode functionality, you're able to switch this compressor from being a classic wet dry to an actual parallel compression style. And that is some really good thinking by the SSL crew right there. The next thing I want to talk about is these three buttons over here. We have 4K mode, which basically takes the VCA and takes it from balanced to unbalanced. This is the way that the original 4000 compressors were. What's really cool about this is if you hold it in, it activates how much distortion you would like. And as you can see over here, there's different layers of distortion. And to toggle between them from least to most, you just use the plus and minus buttons over here. Then we have our low THD function. This allows us to have a lot less distortion on the lower frequencies, which is really handy if you want to have a clean bottom end, but still use some of that saturation to glue mixes together. Then because of the way that the compressor is designed now by using MDAC technology, it allows the compressor to be used not only in feed forward mode, which is how most SSL compressors are, but you can now also use it in feed back mode. Now, the dynamic EQ section is split up into three main sections. You have your high and low bands over here. You have your master low frequency and your master high frequency up there. So the DEQ is really interesting in that it's its own separate compression device. It's not piggybacking off of anything else. So it's important to realize that the DEQ is not a multiband compressor. And to give you a visual illustration of how this works, I'm going to use the FabFilter Pro-Q3 to kind of illustrate exactly how dynamic EQ works. So when it comes to the DEQ, you have a couple of options on how dynamic you want these to be. The first is, if you want it to compress, you go negatively. If you want it to expand, you go positively. By pressing the low frequency, this activates the G-series mode. This allows for a certain amount of overshoot and undershoot displayed on this diagram from the user guide right here. Now you have a low band and a high band. If you'd like to be able to change your frequency selection on either the high or the low band, there's two things you need to keep in mind. The first is to change selection, and this applies to both. You hold down, in this case, the low frequency. The VU meter on the left is now displaying which frequency we are working with on the low band, and the VU meter on the right is dictating how much range. The range is your upper threshold as to how much is going to compress or expand. To be able to change the values of either of these, you have to use these toggle switches over here. So to change the frequency, to increase it, you press up, and to decrease it, you press down. And then to change your range value, again, you press this to go up, and you press this to go down. The range value correlates directly with your VU meter. On the high frequency, you can also make it a bell, which is fantastic. There are three time constants available with regards to your high and your low, and I'll display them up here now. For the time constants to be nominal, make sure that none of the backlights are on. To activate the fast mode, simply turn it on like this, 
And if you want it to go into an automatic setting, then press and hold and wait for it to illuminate this beautiful violet color like that. The mode controls on the Bus Plus are quite interesting. Of course, we have the four different modes. We have classic stereo, which is kind of what we expect. The only controls that are needed to operate the device are over here, with the exception of your master high and low frequency gain button on that side. Then we have the Delta Stereo mode. The Delta Stereo mode is quite interesting because it sums together the two side chains, which makes the compressor slightly more sensitive to signals coming down the middle. So you don't lose any of that model compatibility with things like kicks and snares. In fact, it maintains the punch as you will hear in just a little bit. The dual mono mode works kind of exactly as stated. The left and right controls are split apart from each other. Then we have the mid-side mode. One of the interesting things about the mid-side mode is that if you want to solo the center, you simply hold this down for a couple seconds, then it's flashing that is now soloing just the mid. And then if you want to solo the sides, the same thing operates like that. And to take it out of solo mode, just hold it down again. To bypass the compressor in any of the modes, simply press channel in and out. If you want the compressor to go into sleep mode to use as little power as possible, then simply hold down both of these for a little while and now it is in complete rest mode. This is using less than one watt of power. To turn it on, very simply press the mode button over here and then you're back up and running again. On the rear of the device, we have our inputs, both on locking XLRs, which is great. And then we have our outputs, also on XLRs. Then we have our external sidechain inputs and outputs. This is fantastic because when you send this in mid-side mode, it will also be sending this information out in mid-side. We then have our auto-ranging power supply over here. The switch is on the rear of the unit and there is no way to turn the unit off from the front. The music that you're about to hear is from the Jay-Z Vintage 67 video. Tried to keep it as dry as possible so you can really hear the artifacts that the compressor is bringing to the table. How have you healed the wounds of my heart? My fear of commitment is dead. How have you made me want to believe that there's more than nothing? I'm on your it's through my veins and I can't get enough. I am losing control. Drown my heart in the ocean. So immediately you can really kind of hear the difference between mid-side classic stereo and then the delta stereo. I really enjoy the way the delta stereo kind of ties everything that's in the center of the image really tightly together, specifically the way the kick drum just kind of pulls in and doesn't lose any of that kind of thud. In fact, it becomes more apparent and the center image becomes really strong. All right, so for the next example, we're gonna be using it on the drum bus and I wanted to show you guys some of the negative ratio features. So let's take a listen real quick. As you can hear over there, it is really clamping down on those transients and feels wickedly good. All right, let's move on to the next example, which will be bass guitar. So as you can hear over there, that is really reinforcing the bottom end, as well as adding a bit of aggression with that 4K mode. I've got it in the, not dark orange, but kind of like three clicks away from the top. And whew, it is doing the business. It makes it sit really nicely within the mix as well. Alrighty, for the next example, we're going to do acoustic guitars. As usual, when recording acoustic guitars, there's quite a lot of like low mid energy. I really wanted the compressor to kind of tuck that in as well as add a bit of brightness. Now again, because of the DEQ, not only is this a compressor, but it's starting to EQ some of the issues of the actual recordings out.
as you can hear over there, that is tightening up that nice low mid section, which is a powerful part of the acoustic guitar. It's not letting it die, it's just controlling it really nicely with the DEQ. And then the compression itself is just kind of tightening everything together. Alrighty, so in this example, we're going to be using the Bus Plus on electric guitars. The attack time is pretty quick, the release time is really slow. I've got it in feedback mode, low THD mode. Again, I want to control some of those low mids, boost some of the upper mid range really nice and easily. And by using the DEQ, I can do just that. Now when we get to the chorus, there's long sustain notes, and the reason why the release is slow on the compressor is to increase the sustain of the guitar so that the decay doesn't just fall off. So as you can hear over there, the compressor is absolutely making that guitar sustain a bit longer as well as adding some of that mid-range presence that I was missing in the upper mids. Alrighty, for the next example, we're working on the piano. Because I was only using one microphone to record, I had to play the part separately, which means that my left and rights are different to each other. So now we're going to use the mid-side function to reinforce some of the middle information as well as accentuate some of the sides. So as you can hear over there, that is really tightening up the tone of the piano and making it cut through the mix a little more. Alrighty, for the next example we're going to be using this on the vocal bus. I want to add a bit of air, control a bit of that low mid, and add a bit of aggression with some feed forward compression. I'm using the low THD mode. The compressor has got a little bit of the dry signal coming in, it's still in the classic mix mode. Let's see how this operates on all of the vocals in the chorus. I'm getting high on your Crossing through my veins and I can't get enough I am losing control Drown my heart in the ocean of your soul As you can hear over there, I'm adding a bit of air, but at the same time using the dynamic EQ to kind of dip down any of the aggressively harsh upper mid-range parts. So it gives us a really good opportunity to use this as a pseudo de -er, but at the same time adding presence with the master shelf turned up a little bit. This is so flexible on vocals, I can't believe I've used it on every element in this mix and I've enjoyed every part of it. So, the SSL Bus Plus. I was quite skeptical when it arrived, because I remember the XL Logic, I've always wanted to buy one, but the price point was always extremely high for what it was capable of doing. Then the Bus Plus arrived, and the price point was a lot more affordable than the XL Logic, but I thought to myself, man, where are the corners being cut here? Something has got to give, right? But after having spoken to a representative from SSL, I think I get the picture a bit better. You see, SSL is changing trajectory at the moment. They're in a position now where they're introducing new products to be able to appeal to a wider audience. SSL have moved into a place where they have taken the model of high volume production offshore and have still maintained a really high level of innovation. We've seen things like the Violet EQ, the Six Mixer, the Big Six, the Origin console, the new interfaces that are coming from SSL, and then of course we have the Fusion, and now we have the Bus Plus. As you may have gathered by now, I'm quite a big fan of this device, and like I said earlier, I was skeptical. It seems like everything has been thought through. And more than that, there's the second layer of functionality that I spoke about, where not only do you have what you see on the faceplate, but if you want to customize it to do exactly what you want it to do, then that's very, very easily done. The level of detail that SSL have gone into with this device is absolutely insane. I absolutely love the addition of the negative ratios that they've put in, the increased sidechain options, the variety of release options and attack options. The DEQ itself is crazy and I hope they release a stereo 500 series version of just the DEQ because that would be insane. But that's not to say that there aren't a few things that I would change with this box. 
You see, aesthetically, it looks very beautiful with the mirrored design and having the two VU meters in the middle, and then the controls are mirrored outwards, but for somebody who's dyspraxic like I am, the left and right thing, it just takes a little bit of time to get used to, but for mid-side and dual mono, I get confused with where the pot positions are. But that's just me. It does look really cool, but I think I would have preferred it to be a bit more utilitarian, and for the design to be not mirrored, but to be the same on both sides. The other thing that would be incredible to be included in this is a synthesizer a styled recall. If you have something like a Prophet 6, you can save presets even though the knobs are in the same positions. Now because these knobs on this device are digitally controlled, it is possible to be able to do that. And then if you want to change just one potentiometer's position, that's very easily done. The other thing I'd love to see added to this box is instead of the frequency and range controls for the DEQ to be dealt with by the VU meters, if the left VU meter had a line of LEDs above that showed us the frequency select and then a line of LEDs below that showed us the range for the low frequency and then on the right the same thing but for the high frequencies, then that would give me a much faster way to be able to understand what I'm doing. The upside of the current design is that it just forces you to use your ears, which is not a bad thing at all. Overall, the build quality on this device device feels really solid. I like the way that everything is digitally controlled so your stereo imaging is always rock solid. There is no real noise floor problems. Certain things that are included in this box are just far and above what needed to be included and that really comes down to the innovation that's currently happening at SSL. I'd love to shout out the designer of this unit who's a guy by the name of Matteo Fioravanti. They clearly have spent a long time, I think it was two and a half years development, getting this box to do everything that it has to do. If you check out the user guide, Right down below, there is a hidden function on this box, and you need to read what it says because it's absolutely insane. Thank you guys so very much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you watch here, please consider subscribing. If you'd like to share this video to anybody that you think could benefit from seeing things on my channel, then please feel free to do so. Most importantly, I hope that you're all looking after yourselves and you're being kind. I'll see you in the next one.